There are many places that perhaps don't appear to need computers, but they can enrich and transform lives, as well as save them. Most classrooms need more books, but books alone won't enable these Kenyan children to play their full part in the modern world. The continent has some fine doctors, but they're mainly in the cities, far away from where most of the population live. And if you're disabled and living in a developing country, there are precious few organisations that can really help. But one charity is already working to solve each of these problems, and they may be able to help you too. At this Kenyan secondary school, these Maasai teenagers learn the ways of their ancestors. But that doesn't mean they're living in the past. Like hundreds of other schools, Kilgora Secondary couldn't afford computers, but now pupils here are getting the skills needed to join Africa's new workforce. Provided by Computer Aid, these PCs are the envy of schools for a hundred miles around. In terms of employment, it has also improved a lot. Since after you finished high school with the knowledge of computer, it's easier to get a job outside there. Leaving Nairobi, and suddenly you're in the middle of nowhere, high above the plains of East Africa. Three quarters of Africans live in rural areas. Getting medical care to them can be tricky if the specialist who can help is 300 miles away. Dr. Sadie and his team look after 260 patients a day, treating almost every ailment. Today he's checking up on Mohammed, who's broken his leg. But the fracture is in an unusual place, one he's not seen before. Even a highly skilled doctor can't be expected to know everything. So once a week or in an emergency, he sends pictures and x-rays to the top specialists in the country using a laptop, scanner and digital camera, all provided by computer aid. Rather than guess what might be the next step, Dr. Sadi can tap into a network of expertise and have a greater chance of getting a correct diagnosis to give his patient the best chance of recovery. Another mystery. What looked like an uncomfortable blockage turns out to be a potentially fatal complication. Doctors at McKindu knew something was seriously wrong, but urgently needed an expert opinion. When it comes, it's bad news. Left untreated, the intestine will burst within a few days, killing the patient. But crucially, Dr. Sadi is also told how he can rescue the situation. So this was my link. This was my lifeline for the patient. He says several lives have been saved in this way and the benefits go beyond even that. 50% more people here volunteer for HIV tests. Now results can be emailed confidentially and the postal costs paid for by the patients are removed. Ordering medicines online has cut drug delivery times from 28 days to just four. This project, initiated by local NGO AMREF and supported by ComputerAid, is not just about supplying equipment. Apart from providing the computer, the, the scanners, the printer, the digital camera, they give us training on the use of this. Then after that, they stay a click away. We were able to consult them at, any, at a short notice on any problems we have or on what we can use. We feel very confident because we, we feel we are empowered. We, we know how to use it. We feel, and with constant use, we get the hang of it. Another answer for Dr. Sadi. The immediacy of the computer link makes all the doctors working at Makindu feel a lot less remote. Blindness affects a high proportion of the population in Africa. A few, like Joseph, find a way to make a living, but many get no help and are sidelined by society. But ComputerAid wants its PCs to be usable by all. So working alongside local experts, it funds adaptive technologies, giving the visually impaired, like Lewis here, new opportunities to continue her education right through to university. 
I don't now use anyone to help me write it out, but I do type my, my assignment. I. Lewis can hear what she's writing, and Martin can use what little sight he does have to see and explore the internet. It's hard to overestimate the impact of these projects in countries with few discrimination laws and little help from the state. We cannot afford new computers to place in their hands, definitely. And this is a major step forward for us. Over the few years we've been working with Computer Ed, you know, the partnership began from provision of equipment. Today we've moved beyond provision of equipment, computer hardware, to now looking at uh, cost-effective mechanisms to enable people access. Both small and large projects are benefiting from computer aid. Welcome to Safaricom Customer Care, Lilian speaking, how may I help you? Safaricom is the biggest company in East Africa. It's now offering full-time employment to the visually impaired. It's a massive step forward and one which would have been unlikely to have happened without the adaptive technologies supplied by Computer Aid and its partner Sightsavers. With the training that they have been provided and the tools that we have, they are able to perform just like anyone else. Yeah? And our customers are not even able to pick up that they are talking to somebody who has a challenge. So, where do all these PCs come from? These are just some of the global firms that pass on their computers when they upgrade. Here at Computer Aid's London HQ, each one is completely refurbished. Hard drives are wiped and fresh software installed. These PCs are of a high enough quality to be useful for at least another three years and often more. When we donate our computers to Computer Aid, they're really still pretty powerful computers and they've probably got a few years left on them. So we're really glad and proud that they can go off into the developing world and hopefully make a difference there too. In fact, the finished product, the PCs shipped to developing countries, are all higher specification than the refurbished computers used on the desks of the charity's own staff, running its multinational operation from London. The computers are shipped to one of more than a hundred developing countries. People on the ground are trained and technical support made available before the computers are finally delivered, guaranteeing a longer productive lifespan. Partner organisations receiving the computers agree it's one of the best schemes available. They have the best computers because like now they are giving us the latest models of computers which are ideal for use in community centres, schools and even colleges. And here in Nairobi, charities are already looking at ways to safely recycle each PC once it really has come to the end of its days. These monitors are being refurbished and turned into portable TVs. And this is Kenya's first dedicated electronics recycling plant. Computer Aid itself is also actively involved in the campaign to reduce e-waste. So who can apply to take advantage of inexpensive computers delivered along with training and technical support? Any not-for-profit organisation can apply for any number of PCs. The request can be made live online at www.computeraid.org or you can email your request at apply at computeraid.org or call us on the number at the end of this film. We're here to answer your questions and introduce you to the many ways in which ComputerAid computers can help you, just like they've already helped millions of others. It makes me proud and um, it makes me feel independent. I'm able to compete with other people. When schools receive computers, I wish you can be there to see. The students are very happy and even the community come to witness. At the end of the month, I'm always the first one to submit my reports. There's nothing really I don't do. I'm actually, I, I can say that I'm even a little bit better than the certain people here, some of them. I'll be proud to say that. <laughs>